Hi chemists. This video is all about limiting reactant calculations. This is the part of stoichiometry that you not only need to be able to do the calculations, but you also need to be able to understand what these calculations mean. By the end of this video, you should be able to identify the limiting and excess reactants, use stoichiometric calculations as evidence to support the identification of your limiting and excess reactants. The limiting reactant, which often has the abbreviation L period R period, is the reactant which runs out first and limits the amount of product that can be made. In this class, we are going to use two mass mass calculations. The limiting reactant is always going to be the one that yields the smaller amount from those mass mass calculations. So here's an example. So let's say that I want to make you Funfetti cupcakes. They are my favorite cupcakes, so hopefully you like them too. So this represents our, I guess, balanced equation. So in order to make a pan of cupcakes, I need a box of mix, I need three eggs, and two tablespoons of oil. That will give me one pan. Now, obviously, I have more than one class, and I have quite a few students in the class. So if at home, in my cupboard, I have three boxes of mix, 15 eggs, and eight tablespoons of oil, and I want to figure out how many pans can I actually make, because I want to make sure that I have enough for my students, what kind of calculations would I do? Well, that's where the limiting reactant comes in. So based off of the mixes alone, if we look at our quote unquote balanced equation, for every one box of mix, I can make one pan of cupcakes. So my dimensional analysis will be one mix to one pan. And therefore, I would be able to get three pans based on the mixes alone. Based on the eggs, I see that for every one pan of cupcakes, I need three eggs. So that means my dimensional analysis is going to be three eggs to one pan, and therefore I can get five pans. And then finally, for the oil, two tablespoons of oil to one pan of cupcakes should give me four pans. The issue with these calculations though, is according to this, based off of my eggs, I can get five pans, based off of my oil, I can get four pans, based off of my mixes, I can get three pans, What's the right answer? If you're saying three pans is it, you're absolutely right. Because in this case, we would say that the mixes are quote unquote the limiting reactant because they are the ones that are used up first. So let's relate this back to chemistry. So here's an example, right? It's just like a recipe. So I say you have exactly 7.1 grams of potassium and you have exactly 14.3 grams of fluorine. I wanna know which one is going to be used up first or which one is the limiting reactant and what mass of the potassium fluoride is actually produced or actually made. Just like how many pans of cupcakes can I actually make? The same exact thing. So like we did before, we have to write our equation. And then in this case, I like to label this, how much of each substance I have underneath. It just helps to focus me. And then I also like to label what I'm looking for. So according to this problem, I'm looking for what mass potassium fluoride is produced. So that's why that's what I'm, I have underneath as a question mark. I'm going to do one calculation that goes from the mass of potassium into the mass of potassium fluoride. And then I'm going to do a second calculation where I'm going to go from the mass of fluorine into the mass of potassium fluoride. Again, we did a very similar calculation with when we did our pans of cupcakes. So I'll start with the first calculation. We've got 17.1 grams of potassium. I wanna know again what mass of potassium fluoride is produced just based off of the potassium alone. So we'll take our grams of potassium, convert into moles, use the mole ratio, and notice the mole ratio is going to be between the, the potassium and the potassium fluoride. 
The last step is we want to figure out what mass of potassium fluoride is produced. So we'll have to do our little calculation off to the side and then plug that in for our conversion factor. When you calculate this, it says that you should get 25.4 grams of potassium fluoride. However, we don't really know if that's the amount that we can produce because we don't know if potassium is the limiting reactant or not. So our next calculation, that's the line in blue. I'm going to go from the mass of fluorine into the mass of potassium fluoride. So we'll start with our known, and the unknown is the same thing. We'll start with our 14.3 grams of fluorine, convert into moles of fluorine using the molar mass. Again, our mole ratio is different here because we are using the moles of fluorine and we're still going though to potassium fluoride. So we need to have the one mole of the fluorine on bottom to two moles of potassium fluoride on top. And then here's the kind of cool thing about these calculations is that the last step is always going to be the same. So in this case, we're just going to literally copy down the same exact last step because in both cases, we still want to know what mass potassium fluoride is produced. When you do this calculation, you should get a mass of 43.7 grams of potassium fluoride. And this is where I was mentioning earlier on that you have to not only be able to do these calculations, but you have to understand what they mean. So let me explain something to you. These two calculations are giving you two different answers for the mass of potassium fluoride produced. The first one says 25.4 grams is produced. The second one is 43.7 grams. If you look back to our cupcake an analogy, look back at all the different pans that were produced. How did you know which one was produced? If you said the smaller amount, you would be right. And it's the same exact idea here. So 43.7 grams can not actually be produced. The 25.4 grams of potassium fluoride is what's actually produced. So what we say in chemistry is because this is limiting reactants, we would say that potassium is the limiting reactant because we need to actually pick a reactant. Either potassium or fluorine is the reactant. In this case, we have to pick the potassium. And the reason why is because only 25.4 grams of potassium fluoride is what is produced you can't actually make the 43.7 grams because essentially the potassium runs out first. Just like my pans, we said that the mixes would run out first. So hopefully this was helpful for you as you think about what it means to be doing limiting reacting calculations. You will again have some homework and some extra practice and these notes were kind of short so that you would have extra time in class to work on it. Thank you so much for watching.